strong enough to just open your mouth. That's all it takes. The healing is in me and can also be extended to others. Giving voice to what you're feeling is part of the healing. ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Western New York Tonight is brought to you by Pruden and Cant Funeral Home located at 242 Genesee Street, Lockport, New York. Murphy Insurance Agency, 111 Pine Street in Lockport, New York. And by Lockport Presbyterian Home located at 305 High Street in Lockport, New York. Back to Western New York tonight. I'm your host, Tammy Lee Demler. Also, welcome those listening in on WLNF 90.5 FM. We're doing a, a trial call in show. I know we usually don't do that, but we have our favorite guest, Dr. Gail Burstein, here today, who uh, is entertaining any questions that you, you may have. You say that to all your she guests. Is, she is. 434 1733. No, we love your expertise and the fact that you bring persona with it. You know, it's like you're part of all of this and helping people get better and healthier. So we appreciate Thank it. Thank you. She is the Erie County Commissioner of Health, but she is here in Niagara County and we're spreading the, the word across all mm -hmm. counties. That tune in. So we were talking about obesity, sadly, that there are too many people out there who need to, to lose some weight. What are some exercise tips? I know we've talked about a few in the past, you know, increasing your exercise a little bit at a time. Right. Make start, it more real. Right. I mean, you know, start slow walking. I mean, that's easy. You know, people can do that. I mean, that's easy for most people. Um, or you could try uh, um, and the, you can walk all different rates too. You could, um, you know, start slow and then inch your way up to a fast walk or maybe even you know, like a light jog. Um, also gyms have, um, um, many times, you know, gyms will have kind of like, f um, you know, free trial of like a personal trainer or, or just somebody to help you introduce you to like simple, you know, you know workout, you know, like low level activities. Also there's, um, you know, yoga is great exercise. Zumba. Right, Zumba. And, but there's also, I mean, I think like, I mean, the hardcore Zumba classes not light activity. <laughs> <laughs> you can do the slow Zumba class. But, but, yeah, but, but then I think they make these dance classes for like all yeah. different levels of, of activity. So, you know, be on the lookout in your community. The Y's have that. I mean, there are a lot of places that, that offer that, that type of activity. Mm -hmm. But, you know, walking is free and, um, you know, that's a great place to start. Also, so what I love to do is swim. I know that you said that you love that. Yeah, and, um, you know, that's something that you can do at your own pace and there are certain strokes that are you know kind of more relaxing than others and work your way up I, I just remember when I started swimming I mean I, um that was it was really tough and I just remember telling myself okay you're almost at the other end of the pool keep going get to breathe it's but good cardiovascular it's, yeah it's exercise, great cardiovascular sure. but I mean you know just you know go at your own pace mm -hmm. and it also doesn't put stress on your joints and it's just a great exercise especially did that throughout my pregnancies it was just it was a good great thing. exercise though I would say and I would say that your point in the past has been just make pick something you're gonna stick with and something that right. you don't hate because if you hate to swim if you hate it right you're not, you're gonna, not gonna do, do it. it yeah right. do something that you that you enjoy and also get it get a buddy like a walking buddy my mom has a walking buddy mm -hmm. and you know take walks together and then it becomes really enjoyable you can catch up or 
something like that or even a gym buddy or else go to the gym and you know plant yourself on the treadmill in front of the TV like in front of your favorite show so when it's an excuse to get you to get yourself to watch your favorite show and also be productive and also to get that buddy going because I my son and I did a little exercise buddying but he asked me to be his buddy and wow. he was the, well he was the hardest one to get going I'm like come <laughs> on buddy but to kind of get that person in the mood say it's right. important for you to get up Keep keep it up. Right, you can motivate each other. Yeah. One person says, oh, I don't feel like it. You the other like, like, come on, be, be a cheerleader. <laughs> come on, you gotta go. I love it. And again, you even adding a little bit of exercise into your day it doesn't have to even seem like exercise. Parking farther away in a parking lot. You know, I always laugh at the gym when people are trying to get in that spot closest to the door. I'm like, you pay. <laughs> What's to, the like, point? Really? But even doing that, certainly when weather is good and there's no conditions that would preclude walking in a parking lot, why not? Right. Well, I think the easiest thing to do for most people is take. Take the stairs. I mean, just don't, especially if you only have to go one floor. It like kills me when I see people take the elevator Ding. one floor down. Oh. Do they think though, are they thinking that they should be taking the elevator or they, I mean, is it just automatic is what I'm trying to say. It's kind of like become this culture of just I don't, automated. I think the stairs are not on people's radar screen. No. I mean, and many times it's not obvious where they are in buildings. I mean, I many times I have to seek them out. Like I can't figure out where the stairs are. Yeah. I try that too. I try the stairs too, but sometimes it's just automatic. It's like everybody's going to the elevator. Oh, we could take the stairs. You right. Know? So you got to think about how to add that in. Right. Right. I mean, you're just kind of following the crowd. Like oh, that's the way to go. When you think about the amount of time and the amount of energy it takes to expend 100 calories, you know, we're talking about a can of pop. But if you add that all into your whole day, and then you minus that can of pop, you will you will end up losing weight without a lot of sweat. No pun intended. There. I mean, really, <laughs> you can lose it, but it's gradual. Right. Not right. I mean, that's patience, it. You though. have to have realistic expectations. I mean, we see marketed all the time like these diets that you're gonna lose like you know 10 pounds in a week and you know, that's not sustainable because you put yourself, in those instances, people place themselves on a diet that is just not realistic to sustain forever. It's mm -hmm. just, it's not enjoyable and it's like very restrictive. And so when you, people go off it, they don't have good behavior modification already instilled where they can maintain a good weight. So again, you know, do something that's realistic, that you enjoy, that you're willing to do for a very long mm -hmm. time. And when it comes to rest weight, uh, restriction of calories, I'm thinking kind of along the, the men lifestyle, it, it's interesting to me because I think if you starve yourself, that's, that's not likely to be sustainable nor good for you. But then your body kind of kicks in after you start eating again and you can even gain more weight. Is that true or is that a myth? Right, because your metabolism slows down to accommodate the decrease in caloric intake. Mm -hmm. And so then once you start getting a bolus of food again, you don't have the same metabolism to, you know, to, to um, get rid of all those excess calories and energy. So then, yeah, you will gain weight because your metabolism isn't back up to speed. Yeah. And true or false, because I, I, this wasn't something that we discussed in advance, but people sometimes go into the liquid diets. What do you think about those? I mean, Again, I'm not in because favor. it's just, it's not sustainable. I mean, how long are you going to drink liquids for? I mean, come Ew. on. <laughs> it's hard enough when people have a colonoscopy prep, right? They're like, get me out of this liquid diet. It's true. I think that people can't sustain that. Type right. Of I mean, you have, it's just, it's a, it's, it's really a lifestyle change, and you have to make changes in your lifestyle that are gonna be sustainable. Mm -hmm. And and part of that is also like doing reading, going on the internet, find out what foods are healthy and nutritious and lower calorie and figure out like how to maybe modify some recipes that you love. It's very easy to modify some recipes that you love to make them lower calorie. Like instead of using uh, you know, cream or sour cream, maybe use, you know, low fat yogurt. I mean, there are simple things that you can do that to make even the, the recipes that you love that are maybe high calorie, healthier and lower calorie. And you will feel better all around. I mean, once you start sure. eating a healthier diet and replace chips maybe with some carrot sticks, I know that sounds, you know, not necessarily ideal, but it really does. It works out to be a better overall sure. cumulative equation. Sure. Certainly. It's summer still. Still, yep. sun safety. <laughs> I know that's where we kind of left off last time we spoke, and I think there was so much more to say about sun safety. People love the feeling of the sun. We know that, that it helps us get vitamin D, mm -hmm. helps our bones be strong, but it's not always good for you either. Right. I mean, and actually, that's an issue with men's health too, because skin cancer is the most common cancer, and that's something that men and women have to worry about. And and so we have to make sure that uh, you know we use um, a, a hefty dose of the SPF suntan lotion to protect ourselves against the rays that can cause skin cancer. 
There was a labeling change just recently, and I, I bet both of us probably would have to think about this for a minute, but the labeling change really just meant that many things that said were waterproof or, or sweatproof really don't rely on that. Right. Something to, I mean, keep applying because it's really sort of a false sense of security. Sense of security, yeah. right? Right, right. So, I mean, if it uh, sounds too good to be true, it is. Too good to be <laughs> so, true. we just have to make sure that you protect yourself and parents, protect your kids, you know, apply that suntan lotion. Make sure you're applying it. With kids, I know that there's an age re recommendation. So, when you have a, a little baby, they shouldn't be out in the full sun anyways. Right, but what are the right. age what are the age restrictions? Now with daycare bringing stuff in, you know, moms want to know what they should be doing and I know that your expertise is pediatric, so I could <laughs> ask you that. Right. Well, I think, you know, and um, especially children under 6 months of age, they have very thin, delicate skin, so you want to make sure that you keep them out of the sun and and so you know, hopefully you wouldn't need to apply suntan lotion. So mm -hmm. I think over six months of age, it's it's safer to, you know, start applying suntan lotion and letting, and also the kids are, some children are starting to become ambulatory, you know, after, you know, six, at least they're, you know, standing and they're, you know, and trying to, trying to crawl. And so, um, you know, it's hard to keep them out of the sun, but, uh, but, um, you know, again, there are, um, many suntan lotions that you know are marketed for children and and you know again you know read the labels and you know use what is is safe do you follow the recommendation to wash all that off at the end of the day i mean certainly we should be washing our kids anyways but just having those chemicals on the skin good to wash them off or are they yeah. safe enough to i mean no nowadays? i mean i i would i would wash them off also because if you've been in the sun you've probably been sweating and um, it's just good to wash all that off, you know, let your pores breathe and... Start fresh the next yeah. day with new stuff. <laughs> Any preference in terms of either rub on or the sprays? I know that the sprays are now, it's so much easier. I mean, I can at least get that on. What about the sprays versus rub on? Any differences in your opinion in terms of better, worse? Um, well, I just, I, um, my concern with the, the sprays are great. I mean, I'm a parent too, and it's hard to get your kids to, like to stand in one place when they want to jump in the pool yeah. <laughs> to, like, until you get all the cream on everywhere. But um, you have to, I think you have to make sure that when you spray the suntan lotion on that it's, it's you know, it stays on the skin, and it, 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 you know, it's dry before the child, you know, jumps in the water because then, um, I mean, I've seen a lot of kids, you, you know, spray it on, it's still wet, they jump in the water, you know, how, you know, how long is that going to stay on? Right. What about the issue of vitamin D in the sun? I know that we talked about the benefit. The benefit of getting a little bit of sun, you know, is there a part of time that I should be going without a little sunscreen so I can get a little bit of sun, or do I get a little bit of sun enough through my sunscreen to let that be okay? Yeah, I think you get enough sunscreen, I mean, vitamin D through, you know, th through the sunscreen. I mean, again, it's just, it's protecting, the sunscreen's protecting against the harmful UV rays, so it's not like you're wearing zinc all over your body mm -hmm. that you're, like, zoning out all the, all the rays of the sun. Because ev eventually, even with sunscreen, if you're in the sun, you'll end up getting a, a burn. I mean, if you were out there long enough, right? right don't reapply, right. so you've got to be use care for sure. Skin cancer, is it on the rise? Are we doing better? What's your opinion? I mean, what are you seeing in terms of surveillance? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the problem with surveillance, if we're seeing more cases, it's not really clear that if it's just we're doing a better job detecting them or if there's really more skin cancer. And I think it's probably a combination of both. I mean, our, um, just the protection from our atmosphere is not as good as it used to be. And uh, I think, you know, people, and um, just with climate change, people have more opportunity to go outside, uh, you know, and, and with warmer weather, uh, longer, you know, our, remember our, our springs are, starting sooner usually maybe not I know, this year I want that <laughs> word, right? but um and and, uh, and our summers are lasting longer so i think you know i think it's a combination that we're doing a better job detecting it but i think we are also seeing more skin cancers and, and i think you know because people are exposed more just because there's less atmospheric protection and because we're just outside more and i think you're also doing a really good job in promoting self preparedness, self-observation. You know, I, I'm even more cognizant of moles and changes, you sure. know, because self-screening self can really be a good and important thing to do. Right, and I think uh, also healthcare providers are, are, I think, more vigilant too about mm -hmm. looking at like, hey, you know, that's kind of... Uh, Suspicious. Yeah, I think you should go see a dermatologist or maybe even your family medicine doc might biopsy themselves and send it off and you know, determine what, you know, what those cells what it are. Is. It's yeah. always good to know. We're going to take a break. When we come back, you can check your moles, but we'll be back in just a <laughs> few minutes, so don't go away.
I understand you need a little help with your mortgage. Want to avoid foreclosure. Candy? Um, well, you know, you're in luck. We're uh, experts in this sort of thing. Mortgage, rigmarole, whatnot. Why don't we get a contract? Who wants a contract? Uh, I don't... Here you go, Pete. Thanks, Betty. Write a toner. If you're facing foreclosure, talk to the right people. Speak with HUD-approved housing counselors free of charge at 888-995-HOPE. Yes, ready, ready. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally.